All right, guys, welcome back to the Bluegrass on this blustery and rainy April afternoon. Uh, we are out in the pre-adventure area, and uh, we're just making some dogs tired. And you might say, Stoney, why are you making dogs tired? Well, pan over here, cameraman. Bingley. So we have this German Shepherd, and he got here just a few days ago, but Bingley's really nervous, right? And so what I need for Bingley to do is relax when I have people around the kennel, because when people come to the kennel, he kind of woofs and barks at them in that German Shepherd style, and since he's big, they get a little nervous, right? So I like to bring Bingley out before we have clients in the afternoon and uh, let him kind of run around and follow these other dogs because there's an inverse relationship between exercise and anxiety, right? Now, everybody likes to talk about all these dog training like uh, techniques and strategies, but really for the most part, like you just have to understand that proper management leads to all those uh, techniques and strategies working or not working, okay? So a lot of the things that I want to do with the dogs, like if you can look over here for a second, cameraman, like a lot of things that I want to do with the dogs this afternoon, uh, they're going to be easy for me to do with the dogs because I take the time in the middle of the day to come out here and go for a walk. And you might say, well, Stoney, like, what happens on a walk? I thought, like, I thought the dog training was the important part. Listen, guys, the only thing a dog trainer does is removes impediments that gets in the way of being able to take the dog out into the real world and let the dog learn by doing. You have to remember around here, we follow a Montessori approach where we shape the environment knowing that the environment shapes the dogs. So when we come out here, I bring my mentor dogs and my mentor dogs kind of know the ropes and they take the other dogs and they help them adventure all through my pre-adventure area, right? And as they're going out and they're smelling and uh, they're romping and rolling around and, and kind of learning to be, you know, be cooperative with each other, they're just learning uh, due to the total volume of environmental stimulation, right? Dogs kind of come pre-programmed with most of the information that they need to be successful. Uh, it's our job to unlock that potential, right? They've got the knowledge in there, okay, uh, in terms of how to basically react to, to environments. And so if we can put them in enough environments with just a little bit of oversight and structure, then we're going to unlock all that potential. And that's what these walks do. Come on, dogs! During the day, like, I would say, I mean, obviously it's the highlight of my day. You know, I've been walking dogs on a leash for, for my whole life and I'm 50 something years old, you know? So like, I don't really get too excited when it comes to walking dogs on a leash. But even at my age, I still get excited. Rain, snow, sleet, sunshine. I really still get excited to come out here and watch dogs like when this dog first met me, he barked at me and hackled up and acted like he was going to get me, you know, and just to come out here and let him get in touch with who he is as a dog, like let him get in touch with his inner wolf, as I say, right, and watch him warm up and watch him gain confidence, right, in how he deals with the environment, how he deals with the other dogs. Uh, it's really awesome to me. It makes me feel super, super excited every day. And the neat thing is, is we've got clients here in about an hour, so we're going to stay out here for about uh, you know another 30, 40, 45 minutes. Then we'll go up to the kennel and get ready for everybody. And this dog is going to be like super chill when people get here, because remember I told you there's an inverse relationship between anxiety and stress, right? I mean anxiety and exercise. Uh, low exercise, high anxiety. Uh, high exercise, low anxiety. Really simple. So by the time we get back up to the kennel. Like, uh, I'm going to have set that dog up to succeed. He's not going to be so what some people would like to call reactive, right? He's going to be pretty chill. He's going to be like, oh, you're here? Oh, hey, how you doing? Whereas if I kept him pinned up all day, like he'd see somebody and have all that energy and it would come out as, you're here, you're going to kill me? You're going to kill Stoney? i got to bark at you and protect us, right? No, you don't. Going on a big hike and doing some learning by doing, listen, that fixes almost everything. So then whatever strategy or techniques I choose to kind of pursue as a dog trainer, and I know them all, every single one of them, right? Okay, uh, no matter what I choose to pursue, I know it's gonna work well because I did my prep work. And like most things in life, whether you're painting a car or doing drywall on your, on your house or wanting to go to medical school, uh, the hard part is the prep work, right? Okay, this guys is the prep work. And uh, like most of these dogs kind of hanging out, I got one up there. Go back up there and see Finley. There. Let me here. I'll just turn it around so the cameraman can follow me. Ah, now, sometimes you'll have one. They're a little young, you know. And so after 30 or 40 minutes of trying to follow the big dogs around, they just get a little tired. And so you got to come up here. <laughs> you got to give them a little love and attention. Oh my gosh. Uh, give them a little break. Like we'll come up here and love on Finley for a minute, give her a little break, make her understand that we love her and we're not gonna run off 
and leave her over here. Now these, these a uh, little bit more mature dogs, they'll come over here and wrestle and party all the time. So I might even reach down here and remind Finley that I got some goodies in my pocket. And if she'll follow me around, like not only does she get all the fun stuff doing with the other dogs, but she also gets some goodies and special attention from Uncle Stoney. So that's pretty cool. Come on, dogs. And then the rest of it is we just walk and have a good time, you know? And that's really the key with your dog training, guys. Like, everybody gets too caught up looking for these real specific solutions to problems when most of the time, if you're having any kind of problem with a dog, like, like say with Bingley, he's barking at people, he's hackling up, you know, he uh, doesn't seem to have a good rapport with his handler. Ah, he just had never been set up for success, you know? So we spend an inordinate amount of time uh, setting dogs up for success. We spend a lot of time mowing. We spend a lot of time loading up the truck and going over to our farm, you know? We spend a lot of time on stuff that when you're researching dog training, doesn't pop up a lot, right? Because like, you gotta remember what dog trainers, when they're making videos, they're trying to sell you something, trying to sell you their expertise or trying to sell you an online course or whatever, right? Okay, so, I mean, I, you know, nothing against them, right? But they don't always tell the truth, right? And, and the reason they don't always tell the truth, because some of them don't even know the truth. They don't even know what the benefits are of getting out, right? And just letting the dogs learn by doing. Because it's kind of impractical in a lot of situations, a lot of city situations and stuff. You just can't do this. And that's why people come here from so far away, because they can come here. And I mean, this is just my normal facility. And then we got farms that we go to, ponds, rivers, canoes. We just do a lot of awesome stuff. And what we found over the years is the more awesome stuff that we did, like the less the specific dog training strategies and techniques mattered. And so that made me be able to open up my toolbox and give different families a lot of different ways to approach this you know, specific management uh, of their individual pets in their individual situations. You know, 20 years ago, I would tell you how to train a dog, right? Nowadays, I tell you how to manage a dog so that training uh, takes care of itself. And this right here is how you manage a dog successfully. You just get out, get them some friends, right? And uh, let them party. And this is super important too. We live in a time, especially after this COVID stuff, where people have become more and more disconnected from other people, okay? Well, like if you find yourself a little disconnected and you like dogs, guess what? There's a lot of other people in the same boat as you. And so if you live in an area where you feel like you can't find a good spot like this to, to go adventure, or you feel like you can't find any you know, mentor dogs to, to go adventure with, you can, they're out there. It's just that the people that have those dogs and have these little secret spots all around, they're shy. They're shy and you're shy. And as a result of y'all both being shy, you never get together. Okay, so don't be afraid to reach out. You know, reach out and tell people that you've got a young dog like Finley and uh, you need her to be able to be around some mentor dogs like uh, Miley. And Miley just now became a mentor dog. It wasn't long ago she was like Finley. And if you'll reach out, if you'll make those overtures, you're going to find people to go party with, with your dogs, you know. And it's the kind of partying that's awesome. It's the kind of partying that's a 360 degree win, right? You end up better off. The person you reached up, end up ends up better off. All the dogs end up better off because they get to go adventuring. Your neighbors, uh, you know, end up better off because your dog minds better in the neighborhood, right? So that's what we're looking for, guys. Let's make 2022 the year of 360 degree wins. Let's not be so focused on individual dog training techniques. Let's reach out find some people and some dogs to go uh, hang out and have adventures with and sit back and watch how easy it is to train a dog if you look at training as simply unlocking a dog's potential to be a good citizen. All right, I'll see you guys next week.